Welcome back everybody, my name is Awais, welcome to the next video of JavaScript Essential Training Series. In this video I'll be explaining objects in JavaScript. Well, JavaScript is an object-oriented programming language. A programming language can be called object-oriented if it provides four basic capabilities to developers. The first one, encapsulation, aggregation, inheritance, and polyformism. Now, encapsulation in JavaScript means the capability to store a related information, whether data or methods, together in an object. Aggregation is the cap capability to store one object inside another object. And we have inheritance, it's the capability of a class to rely upon another class. Polyformism, the capability to write one function or a method that works in a variety of different ways. Now, objects are composed of attributes, and if an attribute contains a function, it is considered to be a method of an object. Otherwise, the attribute is considered as a property. I'm going to create a generic object and to give you an example. First of all, let's go back and look at how we create a variable. So we start with the var keyword and the name of the variable, I would just say name is equal to and add a quotation and then we add, I'll just add my name here. Now this is a variable and then I'll create another variable, I will say age is equal to let's say 28. Let's add another variable, I'll just say profession is equal to like programmer am I a programmer I think so so programmer so let's say I'm making these some um, these three regular variables name age profession and it's just creating those three variables in the memory I realized that these belongs together so these are the properties of the same person okay so it would be nice if I could enclose them in a larger object now, I could do this in an array because arrays are an object as well, but I don't want to deal with the zeros, one, and two, the index based, right? So, the idea here is what I will do, I will write this line. So, we start with the keyword var, and I will just name my object person is equal to new, and I will create a generic object. And add parentheses and a semicolon. Now we have created a object in the memory now. To populate this object we can add values like this. So I'm going to type person which is an object name dot and then the type of the variable I want to create. So the difference is when the variables are outside they are called variables but when they are inside the object they are called properties so we create another property of a person I'll just say p name is equal to let's just type whatever the name I'll type my name again and person dot p age I'm using p age because I don't want to mix up with the variables I have outside so that's why just to not to get you guys confused p age is equal to whatever the age 100 years old now person dot mm, let's just say profession so is equal to whatever you want to type here so I'll just say student and now we have actually added the properties of the person person is an object and we added like three properties in that so property is just a variable that belongs to an object now obviously we have the shorthand for creating arrays so we have a shorthand for creating an object as well how do we do that let's just come down here I'll create another object and instead of just adding these properties separately, I'll add on a single line. Now, we start with the keyword var. And I will just name our object student is equal to. And now I'm going to start a curly braces. 
just pay attention it's not a parenthesis not a square bracket it's a curly brace now after the curly brace you need to type the property name so the property name we can just say name and after finishing the property name you have to add colon not a semicolon so don't get confused with the semicolon it's a colon and then you need to type the value of that property of that object so the object name is student we have this property name and then we type the value I'll type Tom as a name get out from the quotation and now we're gonna separate a property with the comma so type comma to go to the next property and then I'm going to type here now uh, let's say grade that's another property add colon to make it a property and then straight away after that I would just say 70 and then add a comma again to get to the next property of an object well we can just say class maybe here and then we can type class 5 or 10 whatever it is and then get out from the curly braces and then add a semicolon so this is how we create an object sh for the shorthand so objects are useful because they have the methods so we can call methods on our own object as well which we will learn in the later course so thanks for watching subscribe to the channel and if you have any question let me know in the comments below and make sure to join our facebook group thanks for watching guys and i'll talk to you guys in the next one